In this reaction, we are taking butadiene and reacting it with HCl. And we have to predict which, if any, of the four products are going to be formed in this reaction. So before we start to try to worry about the different products drawn and the answer boxes, let's just come down here and try to figure out the reaction on our own terms. And then we'll go back and select the correct answer. So here is the reaction at hand. And we can see that the butadiene is a pretty symmetrical conjugated diene, so it doesn't really matter which of the two double bonds we choose to use in the reaction mechanism. So we will select this pi bond right here. And what we're gonna do is allow the pi electrons to attack the hydrogen of HCl. And when that happens, the bond between the HCl breaks. We can't see that bond because we didn't draw it, but that bond will snap and the pair of electrons will end up on the chlorine. So here's the intermediate that we're going to have initially. Now we'll notice that in the beginning here, we can place the hydrogen either at this carbon, which would generate a positive charge at the other carbon, or vice versa. We could place the incoming hydrogen at this carbon and put the positive charge there. Now notice in this case, we have a primary carbocation and it's also not resonance stabilized. Whereas in the former case, in which we put the hydrogen at carbon number one and the positive charge here, we have a secondary carbocation and it's resonance stabilized because the pi electrons right here can actually be displaced between these two carbons to form a double, another double bond. So this case is the preferred case. It's more stable. It's a secondary resonance stabilized carbocation. So we'll draw it that way. And then we also have formed a chloride ion here. Let's not forget about that because that's gonna be a participant in the next step. Now, why don't we go ahead and actually draw the resonance structure that we were discussing a moment ago. So let's take the pi electrons highlighted in red. Let's shift them over to this position here. And also, why don't we just draw this as a CH3? It's just a little easier to do so. So we'll have a CH3 group here. And now those pi electrons are located right here. We have a CH2 and the positive charge has been shifted, so to speak, over onto this carbon. This carbon is no longer positively charged because it has a hydrogen and it had that hydrogen from the beginning. If you look back over here, there was that hydrogen. So it has all four of its required bonds. Therefore, it has a neutral formal charge. And so there we go. We have the two resonance stabilized cations. Now here's the thing. Chloride ion can attack either at that carbon there or it could attack at this carbon here. That should make sense because a negative chloride would attack a positive charge. So it gets a little messy sometimes in organic, but just to keep everything on the screen at once, I'm gonna come over here and draw the products in each case. So for the first case, we'll have the CH3 group and then the rest of the carbons with the double bond located over here. And then the chloride ion will add right there. And then for the other case, we have the CH3 with the double bond sort of in the middle of the molecule. And then you have a CH2 group with a CL. So these would be the two products. What we have to do is discern which of the two is the one two addition product and which one is the one four addition product. And it's all about the relative carbons. Now let's recall that the hydrogen that added first added at the first carbon here. So we'll highlight that carbon in yellow. And then we can see that the chloride ion either added at the adjacent carbon or at a carbon located about three carbons away. So if you kind of count the carbons here, in the first case, the yellow would be carbon one and the green would be carbon two. This would give us your one, two addition product. And then in the other case, the yellow carbon is still number one, but now this green carbon is over here at the fourth carbon over. So this would be the one, four product. Now, in order to match these products to the choices, it is often helpful to name them. So what we'll do is name each of these alkenes. Let's start with the one, two product. Now, when we name alkenes, we name, or we number the chain, excuse me, closest to the double bond. So this would be carbon number one, this would be two. This would actually be three when it comes to naming it, and then this would be four. We can see that we have the chlorine located at carbon three. So when we name this, and why don't we just clean up the workspace? Well, we'll leave it there, we'll leave it there. When we name this, we're gonna have three chloro and then since the double bond begins at carbon one, it would be one, and then this it would be butene. Notice we're saying butene because of the double bond. So we have three chloro, one butene. In the other case, we would number the chain in the same way. So this would be carbon one, this would be two, this would be three, and this would be four. 
And then if we were to name this, it looks like we have one chloro, one chloro, and then two butene. This time the double bond begins at carbon number two. So these are the two names that we're going to be keeping in mind. Let's bring them up and compare them to the products. Okay, so let's focus on first the 3-chloro-1-butene. So the 1-butene means that the double bond would begin at carbon number 1, and the 3-chloro indicates that the third carbon would have the chlorine. Now check this out. We have 1, 2, 3, 4. So this would be 3-chloro and then 1-butene. So this one matches, and we said earlier that that one was the, well, we'll go back and double check, 3-chloro-1-butene. That was the 1-2 product. So that means that for this, we can say that we have the 1,2 addition product. So far, so good. For the other case, we have the 1-chloro-2-butene. So in this case, if we look over here, we would have 1, 2, 3, 4. And notice that we have a 2-butene because the double bond begins at carbon 2. And then we have the 1-chloro. So this is good. This was the 1,4 addition product. So we'll mark that. Now, the other two are just not going to be products, so you can check those boxes for the middle two structures. And then as far as which one is kinetic and which one is thermodynamic, in a nutshell, the 1-2 addition product is always going to be your kinetic product, and then the 1-4 addition product is going to be your thermodynamic product. So that would be the correct answer to the question. For those of you who are interested in what makes the 1-4 thermodynamic, you can listen on for a moment. So we'll come down and we'll take a look back at these structures here, and we'll notice that the 1-4 product has a double bond, just like the one, two, but it's a more substituted double bond. So what I like to do is put a little bubble around my double bond, and then I ask myself, well, how many carbons are connected directly to that bubble? And if we look carefully, we have one carbon connected to that bubble, and then two carbons connected to that bubble. We call this a di-substituted alkene. It is di-substituted. Look at the other alkene with the one, two product. Put a little bubble around that double bond, and then ask yourself how many carbons are directly bonded to that bubble. And you can see that only this carbon is directly connected to that bubble. So that would be a mono-substituted alkene. And it turns out, and you probably learned this in organic one, that a di-substituted is more stable. So we call this the thermodynamic product because the thermodynamic product is a term apply, applicable excuse me, to the more stable of the two products. So that, in a nutshell, is what makes the 1,4 product the thermodynamic product.